Hello, it's Jam Games here once again, and today we are going to continue with the interaction system. And in this video, we are going to add the weapon wall by uh, system. So yeah, let's get started. First, let's go to the interactables folder, and we have this. I actually renamed this to PP page interactable. Yeah, now we want to duplicate from it, and I, I want to call this to call this PP underscore weapon wall or something like that. Now let's open it and yeah. Now I want to remove delete this cube and I want to add a little sphere here to there like that. Now I also want to add a skeletal mesh. Yeah. We want to call this skeletal mesh weapon. Okay and we want to actually move it to default scene foot like that. I would actually not like that. Okay. It doesn't matter in, in what type, uh, order it is hard, but I just reordered them. But yeah, you don't have to do that. Now we have this, and we want to actually change this uh, hidden in game. Like that. Like this sphere. Compile and save. Now we want to go to the event graph, and we want to add a begin play node. From this begin play node, we want to get the uh, default scene root, and we want to get world location like this. And now we want to sphere uh, trace sphere trace by channel like this. And now I want to connect this world location to both start and end, and I want to set this radius to like maybe I don't know fifty something like that. Trace visibility. Okay, okay, one more thing. We want to go to the here the sphere and we have this block all dynamic. We want to set this to uh, custom and now we want to click overlap on the this. So overlap all and visibility block like that. And now weapon we want to uh, here um, custom overlap and block visibility. Okay, you want to do it to both of these. Okay, I want to compile, save, and continue with this. Now, what we want to do, we want to get our weapon. We want to set world transform. Okay, and now we want to split this transform like that. We want to split this out hit value. Now we want to con continue. Uh, connect the out hit location to the uh, new transform location and out hit normal to the rotation. Okay, now I will move this a little bit further. Now we have this, I will delete this here. Now we also want to get the sphere and set world location, only the location. We don't have to. Now we want to also get this out hit location connected to there. Now I will actually do three rods to here. Like this. And yeah, the next thing we want to do, we actually, we want to add a new variable here, which should be called weapon underscore index. And we want to change that type to integer. And we want to click here, instance editable, like that. Compile and save. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to get data table. Get data table row. Which one? Here at the bottom, get that data table row, like that. Now we want to find our data table, which should be weapon data table. And row name, we want to get this weapon index connected to the row name. But actually, we can't do it yet. We want to get from this to string integer. Now we can connect it to change integer to string and string to name and name to there. Like that. I don't know why it doesn't cannot like why it cannot like uh, like change this directly. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Now the next thing we want to do, we want to uh, get the weapon, and we want to set 
get it, get it all, mesh asset like that, and out uh, row found we want to connect there, here, and now we want to split this, and we want to get this auto weapon uh, mesh and connect it there. Okay, now we can actually try if this works. So what this does, this is basically a automatic automatic like uh, system for. So I will show you. So when we like take our uh, this to here, and we move this sphere to to the wall, like for example, like this. Now you can see only the sphere is there. But when we start playing, it checks the location and rotation of that wall and uh, set the. Oh, oh, sorry. We have to set this weapon index. Let's set it to like two, so it's that AR fourteen. Okay. It uh, sets the skeletal mesh to the AR fourteen and location and rotation of the wall. So we don't have to always like exactly move this to the wall and stuff like that. If you want that, uh, we do like basic uh, that kind of uh, blueprint. You can tell me in the comments I, so I can do it on the later episodes. But I think this is much better. Because this, this is much easier if you, we have to add like a lot of weapons and stuff like that. We can just move it to. We it it just have to touch the wall and basically it works. So I can show you. Yeah, you can see there is the AR. Uh, AR fourteen at the wall. So I can show you one more thing. If I move it like, it's not on the on the same like depth. It will still work. It will still be on the wall. Or actually, it might, might not work as I thought. Okay, let's try one more time. Why does it work like that? Oh, now I know. I think our... Oh no, uh, actually I don't know. But yeah, it will at least check the location and rotation of the wall. So if we move it this to here, up to the middle, like here, and to the wall, like that. Now it should be rotated to, uh, according to that wall. So, we check. Oh shit, what the fuck is happening? It worked for me before. Okay, now it works. It checks the rotation of the wall. I will adjust this a little bit later and tell you on the later episodes, but it's basically working now. I will move it back here. And now it should work. Yeah, we have it right, right there. Okay, uh, the next thing we actually want to do, we actually want to go to the blueprints and to the PP first person character. Okay, here we have this interact set text. Here we have this here. But now we want to get from this by, add a branch to here. And this rule condition should be at. Uh, Interact weapon index. We want to get this and check if this is greater than zero. So if it is, then we are buying a gun. And now we actually want to get that get data table row. That one more time. One more time. Like this. The data table should be called uh, weapon data table. Uh, row name, we want to get this interact weapon index. Yet now we want to use ring once more and connect it to the row name. Like that. Okay. And now what we want to do, we want to actually uh, go a little bit further here. We want to get this hot ref and get the Interaction text, and now we want to set this text like this. I want to connect to the row found. Okay, now from here we want to get a select, select like that, and the rule that we want to check is we want to get the uh, interact weapon index. I want to get equal out. Now we want to get the weapon slots. So this one. 
and get. And I want to compile. I want to change this to one. I want to split this. And we want to check if the interact weapon index is the same as our first plots uh, weapon index. Now we want to copy all this to here. I want to check the same for the uh, second uh, second uh, slot. So we, if we have this weapon. Okay. Now we want to add a or boolean and connect this both like that. I will actually move this to here and connect that to the index like that. And now what we want to do, we want to actually, uh, sorry, I will move it a little bit further down. From here, we want to get a format text like that. Now we want to uh, right here, press E to buy, and now we want to add these uh, weird things. Now I want to add a weapon underscore text and also this. Okay, and now I want to, after that, I want to add a four, and then I want to once more this amount. Also, this like that. Now we have the weapon index and the amount there. Now I will move this a little bit further and we want to split this out row. And now, what we want to do here, we want to get the out row socket name and connect it to the weapon index like that. And amount should be the price. So, interact price like that. Connect it amount. Now we have it there. And now we actually want to move even more further. Like that. And now what we want to do, I will move this a little bit further up and copy all of this here. Connect it to the also to the true. Now what I have to change here is I want to press E to buy weapon index. Now I want to add here, so if we already have the gun, then we want to add a text. Ammo here in between. So press E to buy like weapon index, uh, like weapon 2, so AR-14, we want to connect the this to there. Uh, what? No, 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 not like that. To the weapon index like that. So press E to buy weapon index, uh, press E to buy Press E to buy AR-14 ammo for the price. And now the ammo should be half the price, so we want to divide this. Divide like that. And divide by two, I think. For me. And yeah. Now I think this should work. The next thing we want to do is Actually, we don't have to do anything here anymore. I think this is all set. Okay, compile and save. Now I think we actually want to go to our HUD. Go to the HUD, layer HUD. And now I will check if we have, we have increased points here, which is this one. We don't want to duplicate this. I call it decrease points. And only thing we want to change here, we want to double click that. Uh, now, and here we want to go to the zero and change this uh, green to 0.1, blue to 0.1. So now it's light red. Now we want to go to here at the end, 0 0.75, do the same thing. Uh, green, now I want this to 0.1, that to 0.1, like that. Okay. Now we want to compile and save. So yeah, now we want to go to the graph. And we have here the increase point. We still don't have the decrease. Okay, we don't have it. Now the next thing, we want to actually add that function to here. So let's add a custom event. Okay, let's call it 
tick, freeze, point. Now we want to add a little input to here called amount, and this should be type integer. Compile today. Now we want to check if this amount is less or equal than our points. So, okay. Now we want to add a branch. So, if this is less or equal to our points, so basically if we have the amount, if we have enough points, then we want to get our points and set it on the true. And what we want to set it for, or with, we want to actually get the points one more time. We want to get a minus node from there. We want to move it to here. And now we want to get this amount and connect it there also. And I want to move it to here. Like, like here maybe. And I will move this a little bit further. So, actually, I think I will have to add one more to here. Okay, now we want to connect it there. So we want to... Oh. So what we want to do, uh, if we have enough points, we want to remove from uh, our points the amount. So, and set it our points. Okay, and next thing we want to do is we want to get our points changed. We want to set text like that after that and what I want what we want to set it with is format text now uh, we want to add here minus and then this and oh amount like that minus and then we have the amount and now we want to get from this amount like that and add a one more reroute to here and i will actually put this as well so okay i think now this is working and then we after that we want to get our animations uh, decrease points and we want to play animation like that Okay, now I think we have that sorted out. Compile and save. Next thing we want to do, we want to actually go to our um, first person character and to the uh, event graph and go here to the bottom or wherever we want to add the new app function. And then we want to go to our project settings to the input and we want to add a new action mapping called interact and I will change this to or map this to key key like that now we can close this and go back to the first person character now we want to, I want to get the interact uh, interact action events interact like this okay and from here I want to interact interact trace I want to get this and then I want to switch on interaction select like that. now what I want to do here mm, I want to uh, get from the by and a branch and the rule for this branch is that we actually we want to create a new uh, macro and we want to call that macro I will call this check if already has then or, or something like that and now what I want to do, I want to get a weapon interact weapon index. And I actually can get that from the from here. We want to go to the interact set text. We want to copy or this here at the bottom. Okay, now we want to go back here and I will remove that and copy that to here. Okay. So now what we want to
want to do? We want to add a little output here. First is let's call this uh, let's call it like return play or something like that. Okay, now let's connect this to there. Now we want to add a another output to here. That should be called ammo ammo plot and make it to the change it to integer. Now from here I want to get a select select node like maybe this. And first rule should be this. Okay. No. Okay. And if that is true, I want to set it to one the ammo slot. But if that's not, we want to check once more from here false to dot there. And this rule should be this. And now the value should be two. Okay. Now this is all set. Compile, save, and now we all we can change uh, close that. Now here, what we want to do? Uh, we actually want to get the hot ref. We want to get the points. The points. We want to check if this is greater or equal. Okay. Then, and now we want to get the select integer to here. And the rule should be that uh, check if already has some has the weapon. And we want to just connect this with the return value. This absolute doesn't have to be connected anywhere right now. And now we want to get the price. So interact price. Let's here connect it straight to the B. So if we have not or if we already that don't have the weapon then the price is that. But if we do have then we want to divide this by two. So like that. So now I actually want to align this, add a reroute here and also Align this and yeah, now move this to here, this to here. Okay, now we can connect that to. And actually, I want to move this a little bit further. Now, the next thing we want to do, we actually want to create few animations. So let's go to the player HUD, Diner. let's add a animation. And that animation should be called, uh, let me check, uh, let's call it interaction underscore accept. Okay. Now we want to get the interaction text, I add a new track with the interaction text. From here we want to add a color and opacity. From here, from the start, we want to set the red to point one, blue to point one. Now we want to go to the half second. Now we want to do the same, so it's green. Now we want to go to 0.75 and change this red to one and blue to one. So now it goes back to uh, white. Now we can duplicate this and we want to interaction decline. Okay, now all we have to do is change these colors to red. So green, let's make uh, actually red, let's make it one. Blue, let's make it point one. So now, oh sorry, green also point one. Now it should be red. Now to the point five, which is green to point one, and red to one. And now to here. We want to change this green to one, so everything is one. So it's here it's red, here it's red, here it's white. Okay, compile and save. Now we can go back to the PP first person character. And here we want to get the hot ref once more. Oh, not set. We want to get it. And we want to uh, interaction accept. And we want to play animation like that from the true and I actually want to move this to here this to here we want to have to connect this hot ref also to the target 
like that. And I will, uh, okay, I will not do that. Uh, like that. Now I will copy all this and paste it here at the bottom and connect it to false. Now we will change this interaction step to the interaction design. Of course, and connect it to the animation. Okay, now we have that done. Next thing we want to do, we actually want to, we don't want to connect this uh, false decline animation thing. We don't want to connect this to anywhere. We want to get from here, or actually we first want to get our hot, uh, hot ref and get a uh, decrease point. And connect this through to there, like that. Now we want to check how much we want to decrease it. We want, so we want to get a select integer, or actually, sorry, let's go back to here to the rule. So we want to copy all this, this user. Let's copy all that. And go here and paste it here. Now we want to connect this straight to there. I will align this. Okay. Now it looks pretty okay. Now the next thing we want to do. We actually let's compile. What happened? Let's compile and save. Okay. Now let's go back to first person map blueprints. And PPI, let's open the PPI interactable. And uh, on interact here, we want to add some uh, add some inputs. The first one should be called ammo. The second one should be called ammo plot. And let's change this second one to integer. Compile and say now we can close this PPI interactable. Go back to the PPI first person character, and now after that we want to get the interact hit actor and on interact message this one. So target this PPI interactable. Okay. And now what we want to do? We just want to connect this return. Oh, not like that. We want to connect. This return return value to the ammo and this ammo slot to the ammo slot like that. Now we have all that done. Now what we want to do, we want to create a new function. That should be called set uh, new weapon to slot. Okay, and here what we want to do, we want to Add a new input, type integer, uh, called new uh, weapon uh, index. Now we want to uh, set this to a. Uh, let me check. Oh, we want to set that to a our. Hmm. No, I'm actually not sure. Okay, I think we want to set it to the interact weapon index. I don't know why we want to set it, but I have done this before and I did it this way. So I think this is basically useless, but I'm not sure. Let's see later if we don't need that, but let's connect that to the interact weapon index. And now we want to add a branch. And we want to get the weapon slot. Get weapon slot. Get. Now we want to get second slot we want to split this we want to check the weapon index if it's equal to zero like that so we want to check if weapon slot number two is equal to zero and if it is we want to uh, once more get the weapon slot now from here set array element Ooh. now we want to split this index. Oh, why can't I do it? Do that. Compile. Let's try once more. Oh, sorry. I think we want to, want to add that once more. So from here, weapon slot, we want to set array element. Now I want to compile and now it should work. Okay, this is weird. Why does it 
Oh, it is this item. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired. So, sorry about that. You want to split that item. Now, we want to get this interact weapon index. Not set it, but get it. Get from it. Now, when we have to connect it to the weapon, uh, to the weapon, in it item weapon index, like that. And this index, we want to set it to two. So, if our second slot is empty, we want to always set it to second slot. So, like, because else, uh, it if we are not doing with it that way, then we are not uh, using the second slot. Okay. So we want to add it to the three slot, so the second slot that we have. Okay. The next thing we want to. Oh, we will have to go back to the. Want to find our set max ammo. Set max ammo. Where is it? Set max ammo. This one. We have to change this a little bit. First thing we want to do, we want to add a new input here. And this should be called ammo slot and type integer. Now we want to move all this, this to there a little bit further. And first thing we want to add a sequence to here. And after sequence, we want to get from ammo slot and switch on integer like that. Now I will add some reroutes. Okay. Now I want to add three pins. Like this. So we have zero, one, two, three. Sorry, four pins. And the first one. We actually want to remove that. We can delete this. Now we have all this here. We want to move this uh, closer. And now what we want to do is uh, we want to get from the one connected to here. Like that. Now we want, we want to change this slot number here to one. And I think the next thing we want to do. We actually want to copy all this. Oh, sorry, we have to set this array element also to one. Like that. So now we have one there and one there. Now we want to copy all this and paste it here under. Like that. And get from the second one. Now we want to change this pin to two. Like two. And also here to two. Like that. And now, uh, okay, now it's better. Now the next thing we want to do, from the third one, we want to actually get from here and add a sequence. So, uh, we are like, if we set this third one, it will set these both slots. So zero to here and one here. Now I will align this with the other one. Okay. Now it looks like a mess, but it works. The next thing we want to do, we actually want to get this this sequence out from there, but uh, we want to go here at the bottom, and we want to get our weapon stats and ammo clip max. Then we want to get our ammo. Where are they? What? Okay, sorry. They are there. Ammo clip current. We want to set this ammo clip current with that ammo clip max value. And now we want to connect that sequence 10 1 to here. Like that. Now, after this, we want to also get our. Uh, Ammo total current, we want to set it to that. And the value we want to set it is ammo total max. Sorry, ammo total max. Like that. I want to compile and save. And now we want to go to back to our set new weapon uh, function. After this, we want to 
Et that's set max ammo. Set max ammo. We want to set it to here, and we want to set it to. I set it to the slot number two. Okay. Now we want to from here. We want to set weapon that like that. And after we want to call a switch weapon to slot and the slot number should be the slot number two okay now we can compile and play now from here from the false we want to actually copy this set array element thing and paste it here at the bottom and from the false connect it there and now there's one thing we want to change so we want to get our weapon slot in use which is here at the weapon slot in use we want to get it and connect it to the index so it checks what weapon slot we are using at the moment there now we also want to uh, set max ammo so set max ammo like that and we also want to get that weapon slot in use weapon slot in use I like more this way a bit. Like that. And then we want to uh, get the weapon slot in use and new weapon slot number and set it. Like that. We want to set this weapon slot in use to the new weapon slot number. So we will change the weapon slot. But uh, we will basically we will basically uh, change it back to the same. So yeah. And after this, we want to call on equip. Now I think this function should be done. Compile and play. And now we are here at the PP weapon wall by. We want to actually get our interaction here. We want to change this. Remove the text, change the type to the by, price to the, for example, let's make it 500 so it's easier to test. And this weapon index, we want to set it to, oh, we actually want to get this weapon index from here. And we want to set it to the weapon index like that. Okay, compile and play. Now we want to go back to the event wrap. We want to get this on interact. Click it, double click it. And now we get it. So now we want to add a branch at first. I would like to move this a little bit more down. Change this ammo to the branch. So it will check if we want to set our ammo. And if we want, oh, sorry. I, w I want to actually get a not boolean here. Now, what we want to do from the true, we want to actually get player character, and now we want to cast to first person character and connect it to the true. Okay. Now, from here, we want to compile, and now from here, we want to set new weapon to slot like that, and this weapon index should be the new weapon index like that. And now from default, we also want to copy this testing thing. Okay, I will move it here. And now from false, we want to get to there. And now what we want to do is we want to set max ammo. Like that. And we want to get this ammo slot. This ammo slot. Like that. And like this. Oh, one more thing I want to do. We want to go to PP first person character and to the weapon slots. We want to open this first and second one. First is one, so the pistol, and second one we want to set it to zero like that. Compile and 
safe. And now, if I'm not totally wrong, everything should be working at least somehow. Let's see. So, press E to buy air for for 500. So, let's buy it. Now you can see the text goes green when we buy, and the minus 500 goes red uh, here. Also, now when we already have this done, we can only buy ammo. And if we don't have money points for that, it will be red, and we can buy it. But when we get enough points, no, I'm not good. Okay, now we have eight hundred and fifty. Now we have this much ammo if we buy. Let's see. Now we have max ammo. And we only get minus 250. Now let's try one more thing. Reload. Change to our first weapon. Now if we buy ammo, should let's see. Okay, minus 250. Let's check. The ammo is full. You can see. Now one more thing we or I want to try. Let's add actually add a another of these uh, wall, wall by things. So let's click that and control C and V and move it to here. And let's change this weapon by two number to three. So there is uh, the AK 47 or 74 or whatever. Uh, let's see. Now it should have different weapons. You can see AR4, KR47. Both are 500 because we haven't set any price for them. Okay. And actually, one more thing here in between. Let's go back to the weapon wall buy. Uh, now we want to go to the this interactable get details and this price. We want to also promote it to a variable called price, and we want to set it to the instant editor. So we can change those prices on our game. So let's go back to the here. Now let's click click this, and now the price should be five hundred here. And actually, my Unreal glitched. So okay, I will change this value to like seven fifty. So let's say and play so now this should be 750 this was 500 because I couldn't change it because my underwear glitched but yeah now we can buy this you can see we got it we lost our all our points we can buy it because we don't have enough points and let's kill this bastards okay now if we buy one more we should get max ammo and of course we did now let's kill some more chompies. We almost have 750. Now, if we buy this new weapon, this pistol slot, let's go to this pistol slot. And it went to here. So, now we have both of these. And I actually think everything is pretty nicely. Um, actually, a few more things that we can do for these wall by things we want. I can show them to you right now. Okay, let's close this. This is, you don't have to do this if you don't want, but I actually want to do it because it looks more like Call of Duty. So here, after begin play and stuff like that, let's go here at the end. Now we want to get our weapon, or actually we want to go to our construction script. We want to get our weapon to here and get material, get material, like that. And now we want to promote this to a variable. This should be called, uh, oh, not this one, that should be material zero. Now we want to go to the event graph, and after that, here we want to get this material zero and set material uh, weapon like that. Oh, uh, sorry, we want to do it. We don't want to do it like that actually. Um, okay, let's just get our weapon, and I think it can work. Also this way. So now the weapon is our that thing. Let's actually uncontact this. And let's 
let's see if it works like this. Now, now let's test the web material too. Oh, we don't actually have any white material, so let's go to the footprints and resources and let's duplicate this red test map and let's call it white underscore mat. Okay. I don't know why this saves these materials always so long. Okay, let's open that. Now we can change this opacity to one and this color to uh, white, like that. Now we have completely white material. And we actually, I think we want to change this translucent to uh, opaque, too, like that. Okay, now let's close this and go back to the weapon worldwide. Let's change this material to white. Uh, compile and save. Now, if we go play, the uh, weapons should, oh, they didn't work for some reason. Uh, one more time, if we go to the production, set material, we want to set this material index to that. Uh, oh, sorry, we want. So I uh, did a little uh, error. Let's get from this material and dynamic, create dynamic material instance like this. Okay. And now we want just. Uh, remove, let's remove this material too, and we want to promote this to a variable. This should be called material zero. Compile and save. Now we want to connect this weapon to the target, like that. Now it should work. Now we want to go back to the Evancraft. At this target, we want to set our material zero to the target. But we actually can't do that, so let's remove this and set, set material Ah. Oh, sorry guys, I don't know why, but I didn't get that uh, material thing to work, even when I have done it like, I don't know, 50 times before, but somehow it didn't work, I think I will create a little 5-minute, uh, 10-minute uh, quick tutorial after this. Uh, how to do it. I will just check why it doesn't work. But yeah, I think this is all for this video. Everything should be working. We can buy the guns. We have different prices that we can share. We can buy ammo. Yeah, stuff like that. Everything works and yeah. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe if you want to see, if you want to see some more. And yeah, see you at the next one. Bye.